When I was a little boy upon my daddy's knee He used to tell me stories of the big fish in the sea But the tale I fancied most took place in our hometown About a living legend by the name of Madison This is the original parakeet I tied, started tying the boat about the mid-80s, about 1985. It's been a real, just a killer pattern on a lot of species of fish. It's good crossover pattern from freshwater to saltwater. This is the original version of it, but what the fly we'll tie today is a new, new version with a new tail. This is a ultra suede tail, very durable. It swims good and it's just as effective as the old pattern is. But a lot easier to tie with. You don't have a half a dozen hackles to try to line up or anything. It's, you just put this tail on there, put your marabou on, your rabbit fur, and it, this, this is what it comes out to be. Beautiful fly and very effective. I'm going to show you how to paint the parakeet tail to match a two-tone parakeet, gray and white. Got a gray Sharpie marker, and I got the uh, the parakeet tail laid up here like this, because this wide part right here goes on top of the fly every time. Don't paint the tabs. You just bring your line like this right down the just under the back of the fly. You want to do it fairly quick, because if you set it on there too long, it's going to spread it out too far. Now don't go all the way to the tip of the tail. I come in on top because that's about where the grays, uh, the gray marabou go line up with. I come through, get this side. First thing I want to do is make that line right down there that, that outlines this, this tail. I'll come in here, do that. Next, I'm going to flip it over. The other side, come up here to the front, come right down to that line, like I say, keep your pin moving, you don't want to stop it. After I get the sides, you look on top, you're going to see some white up there, so you want to get that colored. Just take your, take your pen, take the edge of the point, and just run right down, but don't go past where your two things came together. And this is what it's going to look like. To start this fly, I'm going to tie with this Gamagatsu hook. This is a, a lot of numbers on here, but... The, SP 11-3L-3H. I can't remember that stuff. I have to keep it packaged to look at it. Don't need to talk about it, but that's a real good hook for this fly. And, it's, and the bigger, it's on the bigger size. It's, uh, you go to smaller size flies, you're going to need to need to downsize your, your hook. Again, the first, first thing I do when I start my streamers, I start right up here front and I close that hook out. Wrap all the way down the shank. And come on, on this this uh, hook. I'd usually usually stop right at uh, above the uh, barb on the hook on most most of the flies. On this one, I'm gonna come slightly back on onto the bend, just past the just past the barb. Bring my thread about halfway back up the hook shank. First step in tying this in, I fold the top part of the of the tail over the hook, and I want the uh, the V to come back this short of the bend of the hook.
bring a tab from the back side up even with the tab on the side facing the camera and I just wrap her right on back toward the bend of the hook when I get about two-thirds of the way back I want to look down the fly and make sure this tail is staying straight up and down on it, which isn't, isn't, so what I have to do, grab it and firmly turn it until I get it straight up and down. The next step on the parakeet is I've got these tabs on the side of the ultra suede tail. I need to glue those down and I use super glue gel to do that. What this is going to do for your fly, this is going to stop uh, hook wrap by the tail. All of that is going to stiffen up that part of the tail that needs to be a little bit, a little bit stiff to get, the, get the action we want out of this fly. When you're putting this super glue on, don't load it up. You don't need much. You just need a thin bead right down the right down the center of you. If you tab tab there, all right. The next step is I'm gonna put I'm gonna start stacking marabou on top and the bottom of this fly. I'm put white on the bottom, gray on the top to match the tail. When I do this, I pull the marabou down this clump. I don't peel it off the stem or anything. I just pull this clump down like this, push it back so it looks like it's. A, Pretty much even on each side of the hook, hook shank right in the bend. Put a couple wraps on there and check it. I want it to be the same distance up each each side of the fly, but halfway up or maybe even a little over halfway is not bad. A lot of times it'll help you to wet your marabou a little bit right at this point to keep it a Keep it away from the thread when you're trying to tie it down. Let me get this a little, a little bit wetter. It'll work. All right. I'm gonna secure that down with about a half a dozen, half a dozen wraps. This uh, flat wax nylon doesn't give you much build up anyway. We'll cut that first piece of white off. Next I'm going to take some find the right plume here. There it is. Take a clump of gray marabou or one plume of it. And like I say, don't, don't worry about stripping it off the shaft or anything. Just put it right there and make it look like a fuzzy shaving brush. Bring it down and you want to Keep it even with the white on the back. Just make sure it's even right there. Line it up, grip it real tight. Those six wraps like that will secure it if you got good tight wraps. Look at the fly, make sure you got them even. Half, halfway down each side. This is a real easy fly to tie. It, uh, you just do the steps right and it'll go together just as easy as anything. You don't want to squeeze these next clumps right in on, right up, bottom right up against the other clump. Come forward just slightly. And I always, I always put the bottom, bottom ones on first. Take another, another plume of white 
and when you put this clump on there, the tips ought to come up short of the tips of the first clump. You want to actually looking for kind of a tapered minnow shape out of this fly. And like I say, you do it right, it'll it'll come together like that too. Check everything before you really tie it down. Make sure everything is is even. Like I say, do you Your six wraps of this stuff. Do that. We go. And you just keep doing this same step up to a point on the front. One thing I forgot to do. I forgot to put some lead on it. So I better do it right now while I got <laughs> on my mind. Um, where I'm putting this lead was right in front of where I tied the tail in, the, the front end of the tail piece. I just take this thing, and you know this is 30 thousandths lead, no more than six turns on this is all you need on this fly. You get, uh, get too much weight on this fly, it just doesn't, it just doesn't swim right, but I like uh, like six turns right in front of the where I tied the tail in of the clump of gray. Found a good one. And again, these this should come up. You should come up. It should be a little on the hook. It should be a little bit uh, not not back as far. As original, it should come up a little bit short, short of the first clump you put on there. Say, so before I tie it down, I'll make sure I've got it. When they're just right, then say six or seven wraps, or if you go to eight, it's not going to hurt anything. Just, uh, but you need to. to tack that down good. Yeah, this fly is caught a lot. This is a good crossover pattern for salt water. It's uh, fresh water is good for a lot of a lot of different species of fish. In fact, I caught my biggest brown ever on this fly. I caught a 13 and a half pound brown trout on this fly. Again, that next thing you need to, that's a good fluffy one. I should have wet that whole thing down so I could see what I'm doing. And make sure you got it on there right before you tack it down tight. 
wasn't looking good. This is a this is a good striper fly too. It's uh, well, a lot of flies are good striper flies, but this one uh, this one does exceptionally well on them. Another thing, it's, it's a very easy fly to cast. These things cast, you know, for a bigger size fly, they cast uh, a lot easier than most. Again, when you put these clumps on there, make sure, look at the tips of the fibers, make sure they're coming up short of the last one you put on there. Next step is also a pretty easy, easy step to do. So we got this one done. This is going to be the last marabou I need to put on this fly. And what I did, I've come right to the end of where the lead stopped on the forward, forward end of the fly, up toward the eye. It's where I put, always put the last clump. And again, like I say, take your time to look this thing over good. Make sure that your marabou is the last clump is coming up a little bit short of the tips on the other clump you just had put on. Oh boy, that look really good. You want to trim this back out of the way too. You notice I did on every every clump I put on there. You need to get it back out of the way and, and again look it over good and make sure it's coming up halfway on the hook shank on both sides. And when you put your gray on, your gray is going to come right down halfway. Oh, this look real good. The way I find it easiest to get this stuff to spin for you to get it get it right is put your thumb right down on top of the thread, right in between the front part of the marabou and the back part of it, and roll roll it back and forth. Don't push forward or backwards on it; you'll shorten things up or break something loose. Now, once you get it 
get it evened up, just like we did the other clumps, just tack it down. Next thing I want to do, see I've got a hump right here in front where I trimmed that mirror boot off. I've got another material to go on here so I don't want a big step down in the and there because this other stuff will not spin on there like it should if you do that. So I'm going to get a nice, nice taper on it. Come back here right, this right up, almost up against the last marabou I put on and this is a strip of rabbit it's a gray rabbit fairly fluffy I like the kind of fluffy the rabbit is a lot fluffier and uh, and you want want some length to it too you don't want to lose a little short piece you know rabbit with short hair on it just cut a little get the hair off of the little tab right here on the front. Just make yourself a little a little tab right on the front of the fly. I mean, excuse me, on the front of the rabbit strip. Lay that up there. And once you get it on there, just, just wrap it right toward the front of the hook. And you don't really need to stop really short of the, the eye of the hook on this fly. Not real short of it. You want to come up pretty close to it. Because you want to get as much of this rabbit on there as you can. A lot of times it helps to just take and get this rabbit a little bit damp. That will be easier to control it. And it'll certainly go on there for you a lot easier. It's just one layer of rabbit right next to the other. And don't don't get any gap in it. Make sure you that every wrap you put the hide up against the last last part you wrap down. Just get it right tight up against itself. Oh, this is looking good. This, I'm gonna come right on up, right up here, right, right against the eye of the hook. I'm gonna do almost just to wrap it a little bit wet right down here next to the next to the hook eye. See what I've done? I've got a little little gap in there where I wet it down and pull it out the way. And actually, when I wrap it down, I'm not gonna wrap it down on much hair. I'm gonna be right on the mostly on the hide where I parted the hairs there. Reach on to get that bottom clump and pull it back. Make a couple wraps like that. Then take your rabbit and have to get get about three or four uh, wraps of thread on it. Pull it back right there like that and, and do about three or four wraps in front of the strip. Then come here and cut it off. This will prevent any lumps and stuff in the head of your fly. You'll be able to get a, just a really nice smooth tie off on this thing but you got to get that last every little piece of that rabbit covered but boy oh This fly is pretty close to done. You can fish it like this, but I like to dress it up a little bit with some got some plastic eyes. These are uh, pretty standard doll eyes. They uh, I'm gonna put on here. I'll show them to you in just a second.
These are the just regular doll eyes. They come with a post on them. Uh, you need to break the post off. And once you break up, break the post off, if you got a little peak of plastic or something sitting in there, take a uh, single edge razor blade or pocket knife or something and trim that little piece down. You want them perfectly flat right there. Because we go we go attach them to this fly and I'm gonna show you the show you the way to do that. Right. To put these eyes on, I'm not gonna glue them right on top of the rabbit fur. So what I do, I take my dubbing needle and I part the hair back to where I can actually see the hide down through the hair. You do that if you need to, like say get it out here on the tips get a little bit wet. And if that's good enough close up, you can see the bare spot you can create right on the hide. So, do, and again, super glue gel. Don't use regular super glue. What I'm going to do, I never put the gel on the eye, then try to stick it on there. I've never had very much luck with that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to squeeze it until I get a bead right out on the end of it, and it doesn't take much. And I will put it right in the center of the bare spot. I'll take the eye and center it right over that. Once I get it on there, I'm just going to squeeze it. A couple times. Check it. Boy, that one on there nice. Get the other side here. Another thing, when you're putting these eyes on, when you set that eye up there, make sure, try to get it even with the with the other eye. Again, like I say, just take your double needle and just, what you're doing, just parting this uh, rabbit hair. And try to get it right in the in the center of the hook, right behind the head. Some rabbit hair behaves differently than others. It's some, sometimes it doesn't take near this long to part it, but this is pretty fuzzy stuff here, so it's taking a second or two longer than it usually does. All right, again, don't stick your super glue down here, then squeeze it because it, it could uh, it could be the disastrous. So just keep it away from there. Squeeze it to get a little bead right down the end of your little nozzle. Put your drop of glue on there. Take your eye, center it up, and like I say, try to get it dead even with the other one. Oh, it didn't slip around on me there. Come on there now. Treat me nice. Slipped off. So once you get them lined up. Just take them, just squeeze them and hold them, hold them for a few seconds, and so there's your parakeet. All I have to do now is put some head seam on it, which I will in a second, but after I brush this back, everything, but 
do the eyes on good and even, straight up and down. That's a handsome fly. I came up with this fly back in the mid 80s. Uh, it's, uh, I caught my best brown trout on it. It's a giant, 13 and a half pounds in chili. I've caught numerous four to six pound trout on it, browns and rainbows both. It's a good uh, multi species fly, a great smallmouth pattern. I've caught smallmouth up to five and a half pounds on it. Uh, large moat, big large moat on it, six, seven pounds. And this, uh, like I said, quite a fly. It's a great crossover pattern for saltwater. It's a good, good striper, bluefish, anything. And it's really good on uh, false albacore. Really good false albacore fly. And this particular one has a new tail on it. Uh, this is their ultra suede streamer tail. Uh, the old one was tied out of hackle with. It was a great fly, but it wasn't very durable. This fly right here would take a lot of punishment, a lot of eating. And uh, it's just uh, just a great fly, easy to cast and easy to fish. When I was a little boy upon my daddy's knee, he used to tell me stories of the big fish in the sea. But the tale I fancied most took place in our hometown about a living legend by the name of Madison Brown. A German speckled beauty, gold around her gills, three feet long from head to tail and older than the hills. Graceful as a dancer, faster than a blade, she used to taunt the fishermen who were secretly afraid of Madison Brown. Somewhere in the icy deep beneath the mossy crown lies the queen of the river by the name of Madison Brown. Madison Seldom seen and never caught, she lives a life of charm From the railroad bridge to the waterfall down by Duncan's farm And in the spring when the water clears and the mayflies start to dance The town folk come to the riverside to line up for a chance at Madison Brown Beneath the stormy sky Old Jackie Taylor hooked her on a homemade damselfly She fought with wild abandon Till his arm turned blue He finally played her to his side She laid there by his shoe But as he reached down with his net She took off in the air Old Jackie swear she hollered That you'll never catch me here then he tried once more in vain, but his reel had turned to stone And in his other hand he held the twisted fly that she had thrown Somewhere in the icy deep beneath the mossy crown Lies the queen of the river by the name of Madison Brown Madison Brown I stood alone, the water flowing black I cast a silver doctor, her favorite midnight snack Then in the deathly silence, she took off with my fly As she raced before me, she winked her steely eye The dawn just lit the mountains when she finally came to shore I trembled at her beauty, was shaken to the core so don't tell this to anyone but I let her slip away Back to this old river where she still rules today Madison Brown Fifty years have come and gone I lie awake at night And I dream about a river and the time I held her tight Somewhere in the icy deep beneath the mossy crown Lies the queen of the river by the name of Madison Brown Madison Madison Brown